soup as wetting agent. To understand soup as wetting agents, uh, you need to know uh, what does it mean by surface tensions. What does it mean by surface tensions? Let's see. Uh, let's look at this uh, a drop of water. So let's say we have a drop of water. And this is the surface. Uh, this is the surface that we want to wash. And this is a drop of water. Uh, inside water, there is a lot of water molecule. And uh, between this water molecule, there is force between the this water molecule. Okay, this molecule. Uh, this molecule. Uh, uh, there is attraction force. Uh, uh, the attraction. Uh, the attraction force actually is quite strong. Uh, okay, so there is attraction force between this molecule. These molecules they pull each others. They pull each other and cause, uh, and it, it causes uh, a surface tensions on the surface of the water molecules, uh, and the surface tension is like there's one membrane, okay? There's one layers of membranes on the surface, uh, on the surface of the water, and it make uh, it make us uh, quite difficult to break these membranes. The result, the result of this surface tension is the water molecules pull on each other. Eh? Okay, so uh, they will cause the water to form a, a droplet like this, a uh, form a droplet like this, and do not and does not wet uh, the surface of the, the surface of the object they will want to wash, because all the molecules eh, they try to pull each other and tries to uh, pull towards the center of the water. So if this is the case, if you have a pure water, okay, yeah, pure water, uh, this pure water is quite hard to uh, wet some surface. If we add uh, soap into this uh, water, okay, if we add soap into water, and then we know that a soup consists of two parts, a hydrophobic part and a, a hydrophilic part, okay. The hydrophobic part, it does not like water, it hates water. But the hydrophilic part it like water. As a result, the hydrophilic part will go into the water, but the hydrophobic parts will remain outside. Because this hydrophobic part it really don't like water, it cannot dissolve in water. So from here we can see that uh, okay, there is a lot of soup molecules around these uh, water droplets, and all these soup molecules it remain on the surface. Okay, it remain on the surface. And when there's a lot of soup molecules remains on the surface of the water, it can break the force between the water molecules. Suppose that okay, this and this two molecules, the, the attraction force is very strong. But if we have a soup molecule here, then this soup molecule can break the force between these two water molecules. Okay? And this reduces the force between the molecule. And as a result, as a result, it can reduce the surface tensions. It reduces the surface tensions of this water and uh, when the surface tensions of the water is reduced then this water can wet the, the surface of the object easier it can wet the object's uh, surface of the easier like uh, objects like fabric okay let's say for example you want to wash your clothes okay and uh, it can uh, wet the the fabrics of the clothes easier yeah compared to just clean water so uh, in this case then we say soap act as wetting agents Okay, so the soup it reduces the surface tensions. Eh? It reduces surface tensions, and uh, hence act as uh, wetting agents. Eh? Cause the water to wet the surface of an object easier eh? compared to uh, pure water. Okay, that is how soup act as a wetting agent.